What is up, Matt Pratt here, and today we're gonna jump back on the Supra. I've gotten a lot done in the past couple of videos. If you haven't seen, there should be a whole line of them. Um, but we have, for body work, we have one side left. Uh, now this side, if you remember that the body kit, the original body kit that I got the car with was wrapped all around the side and glued to. When I ripped it off, come to find out, it was damaged all underneath, and we metal straightened it. And it's pretty close. Now it's ready for a coat of mud. So, all right. Well, let's not waste the time. Let's get to it. So I roughed the whole area up with 40 grit. I came over here because there was some mud down here. There's a ding here. Um, there's a chip right here. And I started taking out all the mud. I knew this mud was excessive mud just from when they molded in this whole side skirt area. And it was coming off easy. Then I decided to dig this chip out. And <laughs> look what this chip turned into. Looks like they have a whole lot of mud in this area for some reason, but it's under the original color. That means that this quarter was probably hit when it was in its original condition and it was repaired. This repair actually looks good, even though I just made a big bullseye out of it. I'm actually gonna leave it. I don't wanna mess with that. I wanna take off any kind of repair that isn't needed, but this looks like it was repaired right and it's covering up something that I don't wanna get into. So we're just gonna leave it. I'm actually going to remud this entire area and block it down nice and flat. As for over here, um, I metal straightened this a couple videos ago and it's, it turned out really good, but I just know right here that they're supposed to have a body line and, um, and it's supposed to actually roll in right here. The quarter comes out and kind of rolls back in. This body line disappears and then it comes back in at the bottom of the car. I don't feel it or anything close near it. So I'm gonna have to go back and reshape this metal a bit just so when I put my filler on, it's got some good guidelines to flow with. This is my dent puller. This thing is really cool. Um, it's a snap-on tool. And pretty much what it does, it welds this little tip to the body, and then it actually has a slide hammer on it. So whenever it, whenever it gets stuck on there, I can slide it back and actually pull the dent out. So the issue that I had here wasn't necessarily a dent. I mean, you can see how many times I pulled on this. All this has to get grinded down flat, um, so it looks kind of rough right now. What happened was is I had an oil can issue, and this area right here was swollen. The reason why this metal was out is because the metal was in somewhere. So I had to find out where it was, and now it's nice and solid. I'm gonna try to explain this the best way I can. But anytime metal is hit, it's gotta come up somewhere. So in order to get this metal out, you gotta push the metal that is up in. So for instance, this metal was hit really bad. And from me pulling the dent out, I pulled it out too far. Well, wherever it gets pulled out too far, it has to go in somewhere. So what I did is I grabbed, I, I noticed that this body line was absent. So I started pulling on the body line here. I noticed this area was tightening up. So I kept pulling and I kept pushing in on this area and I kept pulling. I finally got up to about right here. And then all of a sudden this area is nice and tight. It's not flopping around. It's not having that oil can issue anymore. So now the next step is to grind this down as flat as possible 
uh, to get all my high spots out. And then I can actually coat it with mud and continue smoothing it all out. But now my mud has a nice body line to flow with um, that I can chase when I start sanding it. So uh, I almost forgot that I had a couple holes here um, to weld up. Now, this hole was actually from fixing a dent. Um, these three were actually from them screwing in. This hole might have been the same thing, but screwing the body kit in there, and then they bury the screws with body filler, which is crazy. Um, I still have one more hole to take care of. This one's a little big. I can't just glob weld in there and then grind it shut. So I'm actually going to have to put a piece of metal behind this and zap it in there and then grind it up. So let's see how this is gonna turn out. go we got our little area welded up I even welded that one up too just something I seen last minute I'm gonna grind all that down and we'll get back to preparing this area for body filler all right uh, before I go too far I just want to show you what I did so the holes are all welded up actually found a small dent to pull out that helped um, give this panel more rigidity. I got my bumper lined up. I did fix the holes in the back. They're all taken care of and This thing fits so good. This was the side that fits so much better But I just put the welder and everything away. I just realized I Need to shave this so I'm gonna pull the welder back out and I'm gonna get back on this. I actually have the metal Scribed I'm just gonna cut it out fit it weld it and I can't believe I almost forgot about that. Let's knock it out. We got our antenna welded up and all I did for that was I put a piece of metal behind it and I took a marker and I scribed it out and then I cut it to size, grinded it and eventually fit it in there pretty flush and then just gently welded it. The issue with welding these, such a small area, you can actually heat this whole area up and warp it. Now this one is warped a little bit but not as bad as you could make it. And the way I prevent the warping issue is I'll weld at the top, let that cool, weld at the bottom, let that cool, and do every other end, just keeping the metal as cool as possible. Now, it's inevitable to um, not have any warping go on at all. You're always going to have a little bit, so we're just going to follow up with body filler. Our bumper is sitting on here, and it lines up really, really well, a lot better than the other side. So I don't think this is going to need much work, but since I'm here, mudding stuff up and adjusting gaps i still remember my gap was not perfect on the other side so i'm going to add a little bit of fiberglass to here to get this to tighten up a lot better so with all these holes welded up and my antenna hole welded up i think we are finally ready to start laying some mud on this thing
that is a lot of dust. So here's our quarter panel coming into shape. It's turning out pretty good. I got a couple little high spots here that I actually just tapped down, but this is kind of what I expected to see. As I was sanding it, this body line came in kind of naturally because uh, we made sure we had the shape of that still obtained whenever we metal finished it. Right where I filled the antenna hole, looks really good. I got a good coat of filler there. This area, same same deal I have with the other side, it's a real tricky area. Right where it meets the tail light is really high and it really goes in and serves you off and makes you feel like there's a dent there or something. And then when you weld something and it warps it, um, it makes it even worse. So this feels pretty good. I'm gonna go with that. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be okay. Okay. Uh, all right, the one thing I don't wanna forget uh, before I put the lightweight filler on there, I actually want to go ahead and roll this quarter panel just like I did the other side. Uh, this is the best time to do it just in case when I do roll it, you know, beating on this lip here, it's going to give me a funky edge. Some people call them baking lips. I definitely don't want that. I definitely want to do this now before paint. So we're going to jack this thing up in the air, take the wheel off, and I'm going to smack on it. Get it to roll over, kind of nice, and then in case I need to fill any of it, I'll do it when I fill the rest of this quarter panel. We got our lip, um, it actually rolled pretty damn good. And the cool thing is, is that this feels pretty damn straight. I mean, I could feel these feather edges just because the paint sands really funny, but um, I am gonna skim it. Just put a light coat of lightweight body filler over it, but I'm pretty sure that that's not dense. It's stuff that would probably come out in primer. Since I'm gonna be muddying all this up anyway, I'm going to lay a little bit over this too. It's a lot of little tiny imperfections. Like you see that, like I feel like that could be something so much bigger. Not gonna worry about that kind of stuff yet. I'm mainly here just to focus on the bodywork. Once I get down to right before painting this thing, I am gonna have to get to the nitty and gritty small tiny little details to make sure that the paint that I'm putting over top of this is gonna last. Because if this paint ain't lasting, my paint ain't gonna do any better. All right, we got the quarter pretty much ready for primer. I went ahead and sanded everywhere I want primer to stick. Um, uh, you know, I ought to dig that out, see what that is. Um, yeah, let me do that. All right, now this thing is ready for primer. Um, I didn't put the wheel back on it yet because I really want to get this lip where we rolled it. Uh, this area right here, it looked like it was just a little chip. I dug it out, I actually started hitting the original primer of the car. It was just a chip, so luckily there was nothing hidden underneath there. Started to uncover a little bit of body filler. It goes underneath this red paint job. It wasn't giving the paint job any issues, so I'm okay with it. We're just gonna seal this area back up with primer. We will be good to go. Everything looks good here. Got my body line, it fades in and out, just like the other side. It looks really good here. All this feels really, really nice. No more antenna. 
I got rid of that. I still want to rock these side and rear side marker lights. Um, I just like that OEM look. I'm completely cool with it. Uh, but this side, this antenna, it was just in the way to me. So people might think I'm weird for not shaving those, but shaving that, but it is what it is. Everything else looks good back here. I can't wait to just load this thing up with primer and seal all this down and get it all looking uniform. So let's get on it. Yes, completely forgot about fixing this gap. This is how I did it. It's kind of cheating, it's kind of not. Uh, I just grinded down the edge of the bumper so that my filler would stick really well. And I actually beveled the edge, like this outside edge, but up here, just so my filler can overlap. Uh, you don't want it stacked up, you know, like a cookie, because that edge could be exposed easily and it will just kill the durability. I'd rather have it tapered to where it kind of gradually rolls onto the outside of the bumper to help grab it also. So anyways, and then you do that, and I stuck tape all up on the edge here. This filler should not stick to the tape. Uh, it should just let go. So when I pull it off, I get a crystal clean edge that is too close. And then what I'll do is I'll sand it, um, fit it, sand it, fit it to where I can get the right gap on it now. I might need to sand this area, add some top coat to it and everything. I'm gonna try to do that before I prime. I'm trying to prime everything at once. And, uh, and yeah, then I'll have this gap nice and clean, about as tight as you can get it. So, in the meantime, I'm going to finish taping this up. Now, I had to speed it up, I had to get the lamp out. Got this thing taped up, ready to go, and I want to prime this together with it. All right, let's see if uh, this thing will come off easy for me. There's a little clip in here. Three up. Damn. Oh! All right, I gotta put this down, hold on. It looks pretty good. Now I just gotta shave it down. All right, this looks really good. It molded up pretty nice. And uh, now I just gotta shave that down and then we'll take this tape back off fit it up there one more time just to make sure it looks right how we want it and then uh, a little bit of top coat and we should be able to make the primer deadline. It actually looks really good and it might be a little high out on this edge which is great because it gives me a lot of room to adjust and mess with. So. Um, I hit it with a block a couple times, try to try it again one more time and then maybe we can start putting the top coat on there. Not really happy with this body line right here. So let's take this uh, let's take this thing up and uh, real. Now, I am way more happier with that line. Um, that looks a lot better. The other line was like way less consistent. Uh, okay, cool. So all this thing now needs is maybe a layer of top coat and then I'll hammer this whole thing with primer and uh, it'll look really good.
All right, the primer has been sitting for about 15 minutes. I was, it was dry enough for me to untape it. Um, everything looked pretty good. Uh, our body lines look really good. We did have a dent over there. We got the rolled edge, so that looks really good. Um, this thing was beat, man. I mean, it was mangled. Uh, and, you know, metal finishing, I was still kind of skeptical um, on how this thing would turn out. And it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with it. Body lines look really good here. Our body line fades out and then comes back in the bottom like it should. This looks a little sharp. That's okay because before we paint the car, I'm sure I'll address a couple smaller details on this car. And a lot of times if we sand primer, it, it uh, dulls the edge on a lot of these sharp edges. So it looks like it needs to be dulled out to match the rear bumper, which is not a problem. Not hateful. Our antenna hole is gone. I like the way that looks. This, the, yeah, there is really, this, this body, this quarter panel came out really, really well. Bumper body line, can't get mad at that. It's still not even snugged up all the way. It still has a little bit to go if I tighten it up. Uh, oh yeah, let's look at this body line. Yeah, that looks so much better. Wow, I'm really excited about that. Looks like it's sticking out a little bit, but like I said, the bumper isn't actually bolted down. I can really pull that in and then tighten the bolts up and it should be good to go. So, all right, man, this thing is getting there. I'm really excited how this $300 bumper has turned out. Yeah, we did a lot of work to it to make it fit, but I mean, if you've seen how much rear bumpers go for a Supra, the price of them is insane. Um, so, well anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, next week, who knows what we're gonna be working on, I don't know. I have a lot on my list, so. It might be a Supra video, might be a Porsche video, who knows. But I know I got a lot of things coming in next week and uh, I'm gonna get it all on film. So if you are subscribed to me, thank you. I appreciate it big time. I can't believe I got 300 people already to just watch me work on my car. Like it's nuts and the views, the views blow my mind. I got like five friends, so 300 is insane. Um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you don't miss out on stuff that I'm doing every single week. I got so much cool stuff coming in. Um, we're, it's going to be, gives me anxiety thinking about editing, but it is what it is. So well, anyways, like, share, feel free to drop a comment, and um, I'll see you all next week.